right, good morning everyone, and uh, now afternoon, and welcome to another uh, edition of Word on Wednesday. I'm just so excited, let me, let me get out of here, I'm just so excited about what God is doing uh, in our lives in this season. God is doing a new thing, he's uh, uh, changing uh, things around, he's doing a new thing, and I am glad about what it is that God is doing uh, for us, to us, and then through us uh, in this season. We'll still be in the book of Hosea. We'll be in chapter 3 of the book of Hosea. If you've been following along with us, I'm going to ask some of our uh, those in the class today to share with us what we've been going through in the book of Hosea. Um, but it's been an eye-opener. I hadn't been in this book in this way um, and so just uh, every time I thought about the book in the past I saw it differently but God has opened um, our eyes and our understanding given us uh, revelation uh, relative to what is happening in the book of Isaiah for those watching uh, by way of online thank you for joining and sharing in with us those here in the sanctuary we thank you and welcome uh, you as well. Before we get started, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, we love you, Lord. With all of our heart, we lift up our voices unto you, O oh God, and we worship you. Now, God, we pray that you would speak to us, O oh God, and bring revelation of your word in this season, O oh God, in this day, in this time, God. Help us to hear from you, which means, God, that we need you to open up our ears. Father, we may have closed our ears for whatever reason, but today, God, we pray that you would open up our ears, ears to our heart, our soul, and our spirit, O oh God, and our body. Open up our ears that we might hear what thus says the Lord. And then, God, we don't just want to be hearers of your word and then forget about uh, what it is that you have shared with us, but, God, we want to put into practice everything that you have shared with us and that you share with us in your word. We want to want to put those things into practice in our life and our lifestyle that, oh God, our lips might match our lifestyle, that our walk might match our talk. And we say thank you now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 We've been in the book of Hosea. Again, it's been an interesting book. Uh, we've gone through the first couple of chapters. We'll go through chapter three, and then I think we'll move to the next book uh, if the Lord says the same. But can anybody uh, help us understand um, who, I, who Hosea was? What does his name mean? Anybody? What, what's Hosea mean? All right. And we're still in the book. Uh, journey of a Lifetime. It's a 52-week study lesson through the entire Bible. We're still in that book. We've just um, we've just docked, and we've been uh, exploring the land uh, which we've docked on. So uh, it's by Pastor Tommy C. Higgle. Um, get a copy of the book. We're going to complete all 66 books of the Bible. We made it a long way, but we don't, we aren't just um, going through it in the way that. The Arthur originally intended, um, which was at fifty thousand feet above uh, ground. We're we're actually doing some of that, but then taking our time as we go through the Bible. All right, anybody? Hosea, what's his name mean? It means God saves. God saves. God saves. Savior. God saves. Um, it's a derivative of Joshua, which means the same thing, and Jesus, which means the same thing. All of them are derivatives of the name Yeshua, which means God saves. What did uh, Hosea do in the book? Chapter 1, what did he do? What, what did Hosea do? What? Who called him to do something? God. God, good. All right, who did God call him to speak to? Northern kingdom, southern Northern, kingdom. Northern, Northern kingdom, sin, good. Sin, Samaria, Israel, Northern Kingdom. He was called to prophesy in the Northern Kingdom. What did God, what was his ministry? 
what did God call him to do? Speak to the king. No, not Hosea. He didn't speak to the king. But what what did he do? Well, he just speak to the, the ten tribes. Okay, the ten tribes. Okay, he was calling to speak to the church in a particular way. What way was that? Did you find that he had him, Hosea? Wait. And his life was blessed. You was here a week before. <laughs> he was killing. <laughs> but who, he, he, he told him to marry somebody. That's his ministry, remember? Oh, yeah. All right, what's his ministry? Uh, he married Gomer. He married Gomer. That's his ministry. He can't separate himself from his ministry because his ministry what? Goes home with him every night. Amen. She was, uh, and she was a harlot. Woman of the night. All right. And God told him to marry this promiscuous woman. What happened after they got married? She, she did stay the same way. What else? They got married. They were fruitful and multiplied. Mm -hmm. She bore him a son. And then what else happened? What is the first name? First name of the first son? Jezreel. Jezreel. Yes, Jezreel. What does Jezreel mean? God? No. Nope. God souls. God souls. Jezreel. And it, and it gave reference to a place called Jezreel that dealt with Ahab and Jezebel and Jezreel. All right. If you go back and look in the Kings, you'll see all of this take place. And then it said that was his child. Then he had they had two more kids, a, a girl and a boy. What were their names? The girl. Low. 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 Ami was one. Lo Rahama. Oh, yeah, yeah. And what was what were their names? What are the name meaning of their names? You said the first time, Mother Mitchell, what'd you say? God loves. God so it said God does not love. Unloved. Mm -hmm. Low. And then what was the name of the other one? Not my uh, meaning of the name. Uh huh, meaning of the name. Yeah, not my people. Not my people. All right. One was God don't love you. God has no compassion or no pity, no pity, no compassion. Other one means not my people. Again, the, the big frame of this is what, what's the big picture here? What is we, we're looking at Hosea and Gomer, but in the larger scheme, who, who is who are we really looking at? God and his people, his people. which people? The ten. The ten. Ten tribes. Those are the northern kingdom. Good job. We're looking at the ten tribes in the northern kingdom. The ones that he was sent to in uh, that period. At the end of chapter one, then, we saw some things happen. We saw that these things would happen. And then we saw at the end of chapter one, anticipation of restoration. That, that God would do what? Bring uh, the children of the north and the south back together again. Yeah. All right, we saw restoration. We saw a changing of the name. It went from not my people to my people, not loved to loved by God. All right, and we saw a changing of the name, not not uh, uh, and that God souls. We saw a changing of the name last week in chapter two. What did we see last week as we read through chapter 2? Anybody recall what we saw last week? She had two more children. Huh? She had two more children. No, no, no. That was chapter 1. Oh, okay. She had no more kids. You said chapter 2. Chapter 2. What we see in chapter 2? It was, uh, but she did do something with the kids. Yeah. It, it, uh, Hosea said, go get your mama. <laughs> Tell her. You got to stop what, doing what she's doing. Mm -hmm. or, or what? Or else what? Strip her I, yeah, I'm a divorcer. Yeah, I'm a divorcer. I'm going to take away everything that I gave her. Yeah. And be like, oh, let me stop. Orange Juice Jones. <laughs> yeah, I remember that song. I saw you walking in the rain. Holding hands and life will never be the same. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, but but Hosea said, "Go go, I'm calling your children. Go speak to your mama. Tell her stop doing what she's doing. 
He gave her an ultimatum. He threatened divorce, even though he wasn't going to divorce. And then uh, it looked at, as we went through chapter 2, we began to look at all of the things that Hosea had done for her. He said, I gave you clothes. I gave you uh, a place to stay. I gave you uh, food on the table. I, I gave you everything you needed to sustain you in life. And what did she say? Yeah, yeah. I got it from somebody else. She had left home, stand by herself. And, and, and Hosea said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to fix it so that if anybody try to get to you, it's going to hurt them trying to get to you. And because of that, she couldn't get out. They couldn't come in. What did she decide to do? Go back home. Remember, she said, oh, oh I can't. There can't nobody come in. I'm chasing after people. I can't never catch up with them. To share with came from he therefore is in the town will come or the things that would happen as a result of um, her not coming back home. That these are the things that's going to happen to you. Now, ultimately, uh, uh, the text ended last week uh, with her her doing what, coming back, and things looking differently, and saying, "Now you are loved. You, I have compassion on you. You are my people." and I am your God. We saw God changing the name. God said, I'm going to sow you into the land. We saw uh, some wonderful things happening with God and restoration. And so, uh, again, this isn't just about Gomar and Hosea. This is about who? God and the, the ten tribes, with the, those in the northern kingdom. This is how God was saying, look at how you all are treating me. You're taking what I'm giving to you and you're giving it to somebody else. You're taking what I'm giving to you and you're saying it's not from me. You're saying it's from uh, somebody else. You're taking what I'm giving you and you're uh, not giving me glory, honor, and praise for what I am doing in your life. In other words, God is blessing us. We've been blessed by God and we thank the job for the paycheck. Amen. It ain't the job. Amen. That's the resource. But the hand is the hand of God. And that's what they were doing. They were taking God's uh, resources and God for granted. And we talked about that on last week, that we ought not take God for granted and the blessings that God gives to us. Because he richly blesses us with health, healing, wholeness, uh, uh, house, roof over our head, cars. He richly blesses us and he tells us like he told them because it ain't just for uh, Hosea and Gomer. Remember we said that all that? It ain't just about God and, and, and Northern Kingdom, but it's also about us. And so this is a, a challenge even for us. That's why we can read Hosea. That's why we can read the Bible because in it, we talk about what we wouldn't do if we were in somebody else's shoes. And if we look at our lives, we can discover at times we do some of the same things. Amen. Amen. And so it's also a challenge for us to not do what we laughing about them about. Because ultimately, it's about our relationship with God and how we treat the ones we are in covenant with. She was in a covenant with Hosea. They were in a covenant with God. Again, it shows us the unfaithfulness of people and even when people are unfaithful, don't 
Solomon said, and what about God? God remains faithful to the covenant, he, which means he remains faithful to us. So this is about the faithfulness of God in spite of the unfaithfulness of those that are in that are supposed to be in relationship with him. And that brings us to chapter 3. Chapter 3 is a small chapter. Um, we are in Hosea starts the minor prophets. Why are they call minor prophets? It's 12 of them. Why are they call minor? Because the books were small. Not, not that they their message was any less than the others who had spoke. It's just the length of their books. Good job. Uh, were um, short or shorter in length than the Daniels and Ezekiels and the Isaiahs. Okay? So they're, they're uh, commonly known as the minor prophets. It's five verses in chapter three. Um, but I, but some suggest that chapter three, if this was a um, song, that chapter three is the melody of the song. Every song has a, a tagged line. All right. Um, every song has uh, a hook. All right. And so they, this, this is the melody, this is the hook, this is the tagline, this is the theme of the book of Hosea. As we leave chapter 3 and you go chapters 4 all the way through 11, you'll see um, an indictment. Right? That there is an indictment against uh, certain uh, of the people there in chapter 4 you begin to see um, not the 10 commandments but the 10 complaints so it's as if they've gone into court and uh, in court they say why are you here and these are the reasons why I am here so you, I invite you encourage you to go and read the rest of the book read it with that frame in mind the book starts again, it starts, it, it's like this, down and then up, it goes like this. There is, there is this warning, then there's this restoration. There is this warning, warning, then there's this restoration. And start in chapter four, that warning and what's going to happen, it gets longer and longer. And some suggest it's like being and watching uh, Judge Judy or Judge Mathis or whoever the new judge is on TV. It, it's sitting there and watching as God then shares with uh, the northern kingdom why he has uh, brought them into court that day. All right. So read chapters 4 through 11 and then the rest uh, because ultimately it all will go back towards redemption. Amen. It all goes back towards in spite of all of that, God is still in love with them. In spite of all of us, God is still in love with us. God is still in love with me in spite of uh, what he knows about me. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, <clears throat> it starts by saying, Then said the Lord unto me. This is Isaiah talking. Go out. What did he call him to do? Go yet. What is he what is he what, what what is he calling him to do? Go out in love with her sin. And adultery. Yeah, adultery. Mm, huh? Yeah, an adultery thing. Yep. Go yet. Love a woman beloved of her friend. Yet in the according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, love them like I love the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flagons of wine, or raisin cakes is what one uh, um, translation suggests. That's the King James Version. So we see again um, that. Uh, we see in here 
the word love or be loved, mm-hmm. how many times do you see it here? In the first verse? Mm-hmm. Loved or a version of love? Four times. Four times in one verse. What does that tell you about love in that verse? Love is, must be something that's important, right? Yeah. All right. So, so keep that frame of mind because we're going to come back. I'm in the Christian Standard Version. Then the Lord said to me, go again, show love to a woman who is loved by another man and is an adulteress. Just as the Lord loves the Israelites, love though they turn to other gods and love raisin cakes. Uh, this is God. This is God speaking to Hosea. And God is giving him instructions again to love somebody who is who is loved by another man and who is an adulteress, which means what? That she's married and and she has somebody else. All right, God said, go love her. And we saw this early on with Gomer and Hosea. Some suggest this is somebody else, but I believe this is still the story of Hosea and Gomer, that Gomer has left home and God tells him to do what? Go get her. Yeah. Not only go get her, go again and show love to somebody who, remember we used the word blatant in, in chapter one? Mm-hmm. What does that word blatant mean? In your face. Out in the open, in your face. I don't care who looking at me. I don't care what they saying about me, right? So, so, so here now, God sends him again to go show love to a woman who is loved by another man and is an adulteress. God sends him again to show love. And then God said, it is like, uh, I want you to look at this like the love, uh, the Lord, like the way that the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods and love Raisin cakes. Raisin cakes are um, things that are offered to idols. Okay, so they 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 are in love with uh, bringing sacrifice to other gods. He said, in spite of that, I want you to show Gomer love the way the same way that I show love to the northern kingdom, even though they are doing what in the northern kingdom? Turn to other gods, even though they're worshiping, and not only are they worshiping, they're sacrificing to other gods. Then he says, so what did what did uh, go, um, Hosea do in chapter and verse two? Say that again. 15 pieces of silver. So I heard 15 pieces of silver. He didn't bring it to her. So I brought her to me for 15 Yeah, yeah. Dollars. Forgot that part. Yeah, he brought her for 15 pieces of silver or shekels of silver and five bushels of barley. So we don't know how uh, she got into this place where she needed to be bought or purchased from somebody. Doesn't tell us who she was bought from. Doesn't tell us where she was bought from. Doesn't even tell us how she got in this position that she was being sold, okay? But but, uh, sin will put you in a position that's all this is saying. Sin will put you in a position where somebody needs to do something to redeem you. God told him to go and to get her off of the slavery auction block. All right? And whatever it is you have to do to make that a reality, do it. 
And he said, so I bought her for 15 shekels of silver. Remember Joseph and his brothers? They sold him for 20 shekels of silver. In the Bible, it talks about uh, uh, enslavement and selling servants. It's about 30 shekels of silver. Remember the guy that betrayed Jesus? What did he get? 30 pieces. Yeah. Yeah. 30. All right. So, so here it is. Now, Hosea has a wife who's gotten into trouble. We don't know what kind of trouble she done got into. The Bible doesn't say. But he has a wife. Remember we talked last week also about there are some sociological issues at work in the text. And, and we talked about some psychological issues that work in the text. Like, how does he feel since she ran away from home with another man? He got three kids that he raised and trying to raise as a, um, a married. Kids. Because she was yeah. Some talked about like a lot. issues from his work. to her belong to any man and I will act the same way toward you we won't have any relations in other words is what uh, he shares with his wife when he brings her back you are you must not be promiscuous or belong to any man I'm going to do the same thing. There'll be a period of separation. Verse 4. For the Israelites must live many days. This is why verse 3. Verse 4 explains verse 3. Israelites must live many days without a king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred pillars, without ephah or household idols. Mm. What, what, what is he saying here? Anybody? They're not supposed to have any other gods before him. They're not supposed to have any other gods before gods. What else? What else do you see, huh? No sacrifice. No, no sacrifice in the other god. Let me see if I can put it in some kind. Um, anybody ever known of anybody that was dealing with substance abuse issues? Mm -hmm. um, and um, sometimes in facilities they have to uh, go cold. You know what go cold means? Cold turkey. Cold turkey. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? Mm -hmm. 
to be without trying to do what? Why, why do they have people go cold turkey in the facility? To, How, to do what? Kick the habit. To kick the habit. Now, jump back into the text. I think we did. All right. Um, she has a habit. He is saying to her in verse 3, we need to abstain so that what? She can kick the habit. All right. Verse 4 puts it in theological terms between God and who? Israel. It, and Israel, the northern kingdom. And God is sharing with them, must live many days without a king or a priest, that there will be separation. There will be there will come a time because they will not turn to God and do what God is calling them to do, that there will be a time where they will be separated from God. All right. And when they are separated from God, um, separation simply means that there will be a time where there will be um, exile. Exile is that separation period, okay? There'll be a time when they won't have a king or a prince, amen? That, that's exile. There'll be a time without sacrifice or sacred pillar. That's in exile. There'll be a time without ephod or household idols. God said, uh, uh, because you will not worship me, because you have turned to other idols, those other idols and the, and the worship of them is so ingrained in you that the way that I am going to allow you to understand who I am and the relationship that we had together is that you will go into exile and in exile you won't have, uh, hopefully you wake up in exile. Hopefully you come to your senses in exile. Hopefully, because you're not around it and them, you will kick the habit. What's their habit? Sin. Sin. Worshipping other gods. Afterwards, after this happens, after exile, the people of Israel will return and do what? Seek the Lord their God and David their king. They're going to wake up. They're going to come to their senses. All right? After, after this period, didn't say how long the period was going to be. After this period of isolation, they're going to come to their senses and they'll come back. Return means come back. All right? Return uh, means repent. They will repent. And not only will they repent, what else will they do? Seek the Lord. Amen? Amen. They, they will chase after God, which means that something has changed in them. Amen? Amen. That they are no longer seeking after, Gomer is no longer seeking after others. She now has love for Hosea. The northern kingdom no longer is seeking after idols. They are now only seeking after God and David, their king. They'll have allegiance to God and they'll understand who they are. Amen. They will come with awe to the Lord, excuse me, and his goodness in the last Days They will come with awe to the Lord. They will come in awe to the Lord. Has anybody ever had an aha moment? Yeah. Yeah. Aha moment. They've waken up. Ah. But this says ah, which means that they understand now who God is. They understand the transcendence of the God that they serve. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. That, that they, they've come to understand his glory. Mm -hmm. Ah. 
his awesomeness in their life. They're returning and they're not going to return the same way that they left. Amen? Amen. That, that they'll have a different view. And when it says the awe of God, they will come with awe to the Lord and to his goodness in the life. They got a different view of God. What view of God do they have? I'm glad that you asked. They have a different view of God. They're able to see God like Isaiah was able to see God differently in chapter 6 in the year that King Uzziah died. Mm -hmm. I also saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. He saw God in his glory. He saw God in his splendor. He saw God in his awesomeness. And what Hosea is sharing with us is that there will come a time when Gomer will see Hosea in a different light. When the northern kingdom will see God in a different way and light. And when you and I, when we repent, God opens our eyes and we get to see God in a different way. We get to see God in the beauty of holiness. Brothers and sons, come worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Give him the praise. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise. That, that, that's all that, that we're seeing here is that now they have they have a real sense and a real understanding of who God is to them and what God is to them and who God is for them. They have a, a real sense of God. What, if, what do we understand about, about uh, I'm going to go back now to, to verse 1, because we see the word love or a divination of that word four times in that one verse. That, with faithfulness, reason that somebody can be faithful, um, oftentimes is because they have love. And so in this text, in this Hosea uh, uh, book, in the narrative, this theme of love permeates. Not only is this the theme of faithfulness, it's the theme of love. And now we get to compare and contrast, mm -hmm. if you will. Compare and contrast love. Compare and contrast how we love versus how we are loved by God. So let's go back to verse 1. Because in verse 1, it tells us, Then the Lord said to me, Go again, show love to a woman who is loved by another man and is an adulteress who is loved by somebody else and is not living in accordance with the covenant. And this kind of love, the love that Gomer showed uh, to others and, uh, and the relationship that she had is a selfish kind of love. This love is all about me. This love is all about what I can get. This love is about me and me alone, me, myself, and I, and I don't care who I hurt in the process. Here it talks about two married people. And he loved her even though he was married and she loved him 
even though she was married. That's a selfish kind of love. Amen? Amen. That's a love that looks out for numero uno. Amen? Amen? And that's a portion of love that's lifted up here that helps us to understand something about the nature of Gomer, the nature of the northern kingdom, but then even our own nature. Because there have been times even in our, in our own experience where we've been selfish with love. Amen. Where our love has been. So, now, there are times, let me just speak to that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because there are times when you have to be um, guarded for your own health, if it's physical or emotional or psychological health. There are times when, when there is self love that's necessary. Mm -hmm. Amen. For your own uh, health your own um, uh, uh, before you go crazy um, we call it self care self care is self love and so there are instances and moments when you got to do what you have to do for itself in order for self to be healed and whole and then I can do for others Okay, but we ain't talking about that here we ain't talking about this self love self care that, that needs to happen so that I can be well enough to then continue to share and show love with others. Here we're talking about a selfish love. That ain't got nothing to do with self-care. That ain't got nothing to do. This is all about what I want to do and why I want to do it. That, that's what we're talking about here. The selfishness of people who say that they're love and they're doing it for selfish reasons. All right, but then he didn't stop there because then God said there is selfish love that we see in the text. It's a love that Gomer showed us that's selfish. It's a love that whoever it is she's, her lover is, that's a selfish kind of love. But then he said there is, there is another kind of love. Just as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other guys. And I want to, before going there, and love raising cakes. Love, there's a, there's another love. So the first two love, uh, or the first love is the love of uh, a selfish love of, of people. Then it's selfish love of things, like, the, like uh, love of raising cakes. Again, raising cakes were given to idols, all right? And so here it is that they are loving the things uh, that God uh, provides, even though they don't uh, understand that they get it from God, and then they are um, uh, sacrificing those things to everybody but God. Let me see if I can help you. God gives you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. How much time do you sacrifice to God? You sacrifice in front of um, Oprah, you sacrifice in front of, you know, you name it. I ain't got to call them out. But but we sacrifice our time somewhere. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Whether we realize it or not, we are sacrificing our, how much of your time do you sacrifice to God? Or does God just get the leftovers of you? Yeah. Whatever's left, mm -hmm. that's what I'll give to God. Mm -hmm. Or does he get the best of you? Here, 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 they love idols so much that they gave the idols the best of what they had. They sacrificed the best of who and what they had to somebody else. And our question is, 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 that God is posing to us, and when you sacrifice the best of what you have to everybody else and not unto God, that's selfish. Amen. You're being selfish with time, talent, treasure, and your thanks. Amen? Mm -hmm. I can't, 
say your man say ouch. <laughs> ouch. Yeah. That, that, that's what God wants us to reflect on as we look at the text. Where do we sacrifice what we believe is valuable? And who do we sacrifice it to? They took what they thought was valuable and they sacrificed it to other gods, even though they were in relationship with God. And when you do that, so we see the selfishness of love. Because there can be a love that is selfish. Amen. Yeah, that we can be selfish with, with our love. But then, you know, first, we can be selfish with people. We can be selfish with things. But then we see a different kind of love. And that's the love that um, he says, Hosea says in verse 1. The Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods. That's a different kind of love. Amen? That, that's loving on another level. That, that's the love that caused God to send Jesus. Amen. That's the love that caused God to send Jesus. That's the love that is a, 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 a love that is exhibited for God. We all know this text, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. What did he do because of the love that he had for a world that did not love him back? Amen. Because we, in fact, we may have gotten worse. <laughs> Don't say we ain't gone too far. But we, we may have gotten worse in the world that we are in. Amen. 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 And we're getting, the, the Bible said we'll get weaker, wiser, and weaker. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten wiser with all this technology and everything. And we've gotten spiritually weaker. Yeah. Amen. For God so loved humanity. Here is what he did because he loved us in spite of us. He loved us even when we didn't love him back. He said, I came into the world and the world that I created rejected me. <laughs> That's something. Mm -hmm. But yet I sent, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He showed us, he displayed to us. That's a selfless love. And he exhibits, it. he has exhibited, and every day he is exhibiting his selfless love, selfless love for us every day. And that's why, um, that's why we are, that's why Gomer, that's why Hosea was commanded to do what he did. Because God was speaking to Hosea saying, I want you to love in the same way. I want you to love her in the same way that I love the northern kingdom. Now, we can't love. And if we, again, we got three levels. Hosea, Gomer, God, northern kingdom. God and who? Us. God and us. We got this. This is on three levels. It's, 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 the text is telling us about a very specific 
Hosea Gomer. The text helps elevate us that this ain't just about Hosea and Gomer. This is a picture of what God and the northern kingdom looks like. But then we can extract some of what's here for us today so that we can get a picture of what God and us look like. What God and humanity looks like now. So we're on three different levels. It's, it's, and, and God is sharing with Hosea the same way that I love them. Selfless love. It's the same way that I need you to love her. Selfless love. Now we're on three levels. And God is still speaking. And God is still saying. He said it through Jesus when Jesus was walking on earth. And he's still speaking it to us through the words of Jesus we get in the Bible and through his rhema word that he sends to us daily. I need you, who are my disciples, to love selflessly. Now, somebody may be asking, Pastor, how do I do it? Amen. Amen. How am I supposed to love on God's level. Amen. Amen. Guess what? In our flesh, we can't. Can't love on God's level in our flesh. It's impossible. But, thanks be to God, when you accepted Jesus into your life, what happened to the flesh? What does the Bible tell us happened to the flesh? It's dead. You are risen to new life, not to walk according to the flesh, world, old nature, old person, old man, amen, but to walk how? According to the spirit. And so if I walk in accordance with the spirit, because God, according to Ephesians chapter 1, has given us a seal of the spirit. Amen. amen. A deposit of the Holy Spirit in us. And if I am crucifying the flesh daily. Dying to, to the flesh daily. That's all that means. That every day I wake up and say, God, I yesterday I didn't get it right. I cut somebody out. I, I cut somebody off on the road. I gave somebody the bird because they, they 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 whipped in front of me while I was driving. <laughs> God crucified that in me. Amen. Those are real. We we still struggle. We still struggle with that every day. I struggle with it. Y'all may be perfect, but I struggle with it every day. Mm -hmm. I was I was riding behind somebody today on the way here. I'm in a hurry. I'm, I drive fast anyway. Uh, I was even in a more of a hurry. And then some said, why are you all up on that person's bumper? <laughs> Slow down. And I just would ease out. I said, thank you, Lord. Because they probably like... <laughs> Saying all kind of stuff to me, and, and uh, but but each of us, every day, we need to ask God, how do we do it? We can't do it, operating in the flesh. But if we we by the Spirit crucify the things of the flesh and the desires of the flesh, because fleshly desires want you to do what? Yeah. Sin, you hit me, I'm going to hit you back. That, that's what the flesh wants us to do. The flesh wants us to fight with everybody else around us. You did this to me, you kicked my dog, I'm going to kick your cat. Right? That, that's what the flesh wants us to do, to stay in conflict, to stay divided. But the love that God 
showed us through Jesus. Somebody go to 1 John. This is back in the back. 1 John chapter 3, starting at verse 6. Somebody get 1 John chapter 4, starting at verse 7. I think it's 1 John chapter 3, verses 6, 7, and 8. I'll tell you when to start and stop. And then 1 John chapter 4, verses 11, probably through 7 through 11. And then we'll, we'll end up, we'll wrap up. Chapter 3, verse 6. Verse 6. First John chapter 1. Verse uh first John chapter 3. Verse 6. Whosoever abide in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Little children, let no man deride you. He that does it right is righteous, even as he is right. All right. Go down to verse 11. I may have missed him. Go to verse 11. Here is where I was looking for. So this is a message that we heard from the beginning that we should love one another. All right. Start there when you go home chapter 3 and then read those verses about the love the love of God the love that God has for us 1 John chapter 3 and then verse 1 John chapter 4 verse 7 says dear friends let us love one another because love is from God and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God because God is love. That's Amen. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. So read those when you get home because it is possible because God said it's possible. He would not call us to do something that he does not make provision for it to happen. Amen? Amen? So we need to allow more of his spirit inside of our heart, more of him inside of us. We have to do what? Die to the flesh every day. Every day that ought to be, God, I need you. I need to die to my flesh. I no longer want to operate based on the way that the world is dic dictating to me to operate according to the standards of the world uh, of, of Romans 12 and 2 and be not conformed to this world. I no longer want to be conformed to this world but I want to be what? Transformed by the renewing of my mind. And as we pray that prayer every day God will God will work in us and give us the ability to do what we cannot do in our own selves. And that is love. That word love is the word agape in the Greek. It is a selfless love. It is the love that God displayed displayed at the cross, displayed when Jesus rose from the dead, and is still displayed to us, his children. And now, as we accept him, as we turn, because that word said return, they, they return, she returned to her husband, they returned from exile and said, like the prodigal son came to his senses, return back home 
The father wasn't mad at him. The father gave him a robe, a ring, some sandals, and a reception. The father showed him that he still loved him. And we are called to do the same. We're called to do the same. Stop right there. Amen. 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 Any thoughts, comments, questions about our lesson today? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you in just these few verses that you help us unpack some things that we can see about what selfish love looks like and what unselfish love or selfless love looks like. God, we pray that you would help us to die to our flesh daily, die to the things of the world and the things that the enemy wants to keep uh, bombarding in front of our eyes and our face. Help us to die to those things. Help us in our mind, God, in the mind of our spirit, soul, body, heart. Help us, oh God, to be elevated in our mind and think on things above and not things below. And then, God, we pray that you would crucify, help us to crucify the flesh daily, that we no longer walk in accordance to the things of this word, but that we walk in accordance to your word. Anoint us and endow us with your Holy Spirit that we might be able to love as you have loved us. That we love you and that we love others. Thank you, God. Thank you for helping us in this way. That's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 For those watching, we thank you for watching with us today. Join us again on Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. and then again at 11.15 uh, for our Sunday morning worship. We, we pray that this word has been a blessing to you. If so, and you want to know more about how to receive the Holy Spirit in your life, how to be receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, just contact us on our social media pages and we will someone will share with you uh, how to make that a reality. Then if this ministry is a blessing to you and you want to consider um, sowing a seed, you can go to our cash app, the dollar sign PCC Gary. Again, thank you for watching. We'll see you soon.